Hey guys, welcome back to the Compass Games Learn to Play series. Today we welcome designer Ken Reppel, who is going to teach us how to play his game 1812 War on the Great Lakes Frontier. So let's board those warships. Over to you, Ken. Hi, this is Ken Reppel, designer of 1812 War on the Great Lakes Frontier, and the purpose of this video is a how to play 1812. First, let's take a look at the three main playing components, which would be the map, the counters, and the cards. We'll take a look at the map first. The map is going to be two 22 by 34s laid lengthwise. On the map, what we have in the lower left corner down here is Cincinnati. Above it and up to the right would be Detroit up here. Going across Lake Erie down to Pittsburgh. over to the Niagara Peninsula and the Niagara River, the Niagara Falls right there. Obviously you cannot pass through here. Up here is Toronto or York at this point, going across Lake Ontario to the main U.S. base would be Sackett's Harbor, the main British base which would be Kingston, down the St. Lawrence River through the rapids, through the rapids to Montreal, and finally ending up in the upper right hand corner in Quebec. Down through Lake Champlain, through to Albany. Those are the main components of the map. So we wanted to take a look at some of the hexes here, and let's, let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, so let's take a look at the Niagara area a little bit closer and we'll go through some of the terrain. The green hexes are the forest, the yellow are the clearings, the darker blue over here would be a lake hex, and the lighter blue are the river hexes. These settlements have either the polygons and they have triangles and squares. We'll scroll down a little bit and we'll show you right there. The settlements are villages for triangle, and as you add sides, you can see that the number of what we have victory points and winter quarter value increases. If they have the little circles on the end, those are the forts. So this would be a village with a fort, then a town, a town with a fort, and so on. There's two different things. There's a difference between the port and the harbor, which is very important. The port is like, for instance, Willoughby. That would be the port. The harbor is the space in front of it with its docks. That's the harbor. Okay, so you have the port and then the harbor. So, you you know, vessels will have to exit that way. Bateau can leave anyway, any hex side. Non-hexes will be these areas in here. The, you cannot go, you know, these areas you cannot enter. Nor can you enter, the, of course, the rapids. You cannot cross these islands right here. Those are considered non-hexes, even though they're hexides. You cannot cross over those. The sequence of play will is scroll down a little bit. You'll see that right here on the lower left. The sequence of play is uh, right here. You can follow that there. It's also on the west map also. A little bit to the right, these are some of the turn record track, the events block track, another depiction of the villages, and the wider war with the U.S. track. It was a great map drawn by Ivan Caceres. Beautiful. He did a great job on this. Oh, one more item. Up at the top, which people sometimes neglect, this area right here. This leads up to here, up to Lake Huron, so you can enter it through this way. It's tipped at almost 90 degrees. And uh, Mackinac and uh, Fort St. Joseph are up this way. So you can exit this, enter here. Sometimes people neglect that. Let's take a quick look at the counters and the cards. Okay, well we have some example counters and some examples of the cards. We have some regiments. This would be a regiment right here. They are, if you have the rules, they're on page 7 of the rule books. They give an explanation of what a regiment is, and it only has one value, that would be the combat value, that's it. 
That's all they have. Their shield, that depicts whether they are militia or NAW or regulars. They do have a flip side for their reduced strength. It has a slash across it and a reduced strength. Leaders. The leaders here, which you know, this is an example of one of those. This would be an officer, what we call an officer, a land leader. They are rated for their attack value. That would be the top number, the one. They're rated for their defense value. That would be the two. And they are rated for how many stars they have. That would be how many men they can control when they're moving. They don't have a flip side. There are no replacement officers or anything like that. If an officer is eliminated, then there is no replacement generally for them. Prince Regent, this is an example of a vessel. Okay, so here we have a vessel. The defense file we call the hull is five. That would be five. That would be basically its defense. Up here is what it can attack with four black and two white. There would be four eight-sided dice and two six-sided dice and that would be their offensive power next to this is a commodore commodores are distinguished by the anchor and they have an extra cannonball that they can add on so if he was with the prince regent he would have four eights and three sixes okay let's take a quick look at the cards we have three different types of cards here we have event cards we have combat cards and we have um, reaction cards. So those would be the three types of cards that we have in here. They would be around page 10 of the rule books. They describe the cards. They have the card type, which is event, combat, and reaction. They have the card title, which is, for instance, the burning of or double shot. They have the op value, possibly one in this case. They have a special effect. What I call this area is the special effect. Most of the games call them events, but some special effects are events, some are combat, and some are reactions. It gives a year the identification number. So you have the year that the card's available and an identification number at the bottom. That's a quick view of what the cards are. This is more of a CDG, like more in the Paths of Glory than the Washington War type. Okay, it's more like that where you play your ops and then each op you can buy actions with, as opposed to Washington's War if you play that. Let's take a look at one of the uh, scenarios. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the scenario Fat Dogs Bites and we're going to do a playthrough of this one. We're going to take a look at this. When you're playing a scenario, what you want to do is go to page two of the playbook. So start there. And in this case, I'm going to play a one map scenario. So I'm going to start with 1.1. It would be on page two of the playbook, selecting and setting up the scenario. So I'm going to use a one map scenario. So I, I choose that. And I've already set up the pieces, the counters. The setup card is right over here. What you want to do next, after you select your scenario and set it up, is check the history behind the scenarios, which is on page 38 of the playbook. They give you some ideas of what you should do in the scenario, on the shorter ones. On the campaign games, there is not there. But on the short one map scenarios, check out the history behind the scenarios. It will give you an idea of what you want to do. So, let's play the game. The first thing you want to do is check out your sequence of play, which is down in the lower left right there. And we're going to follow right through this, okay? So the first thing you want to do is to check out the special scenario rules. Now, the special scenario rules are on the setup card. There may be some right at the bottom here. Okay, here's a list of them. What we're going to play is one hand of eight cards. Okay, so first, the U.S. decks consists of these cards. Number two, the British of these cards. Number three, he deal each player one hand of eight cards, which I've done up here. These are the US, there's five and then three more. These are the British cards, there's five of them. And then the other three. Okay, so we've dealt our hands. One hand each of eight cards and the US is gonna be the first player. The British full supply source, which is Quebec, which is not on the map, is going to be replaced by Burlington, Ontario. The U.S. units in Fort Niagara and Fort George are always considered in full supply, basically because they have control of the lake at that point. 
The U.S. player is granted 10 victory points at the end. Number 8, only the West map. Number 9 tells you which rules to ignore. In this case, the Winds of Fortune, the Block Defense, the Repair Vessels, the Restore Regulars, the Winter Season, and the Wider War with the U.S. is not used. Additionally, York and all land hexes connected to York and Lake Ontario itself are non-hexes. So always check out the special rules that's important. So well, let's take a look at what we have next. Uh, going through the sequence of plays, the first player determination. First player is U.S. by the special scenario. Reinforcement phase. Well, neither side has reinforcements. There's none on the scenario card. Next would be dealing cards and that. Well, we've done that. Then the action phase. So this is the heart of the game. This is where you're going to be playing the game. First is the U.S. player, and what you're going to do is to play a card. So the U.S. will play as their first card, the Winter Offensive. We'll take a look at that card. So it's an event card. It's got one operation point. The year is 1813 on this. And it gives the text for the event. The sequence of play is this. We're going to play the operation. So the first operation will be to take Winchester over in this, right over here, Winchester and his uh, troops, and we're going to roll for a unit activation. So when we spend an operation point, we're going to have a choice of what we want to do with it. Let's take a look at what our choices are. So when we spend an operation point in an action phase, we're going to have one of these seven choices here to spend our operations on. A unit activation, and it gives a small description of what you can do. A siege warfare activation, a British depot activation, constructing vessels, repairing vessels, restoring regulars, and constructing depots. All these are one op. Piece. That's the choices you have when you spend your op. And the very first thing you want to do when you play your card is to spend your operation points. So we're going to do that first. We're going to choose the top choice, unit activation. If you have the player's aid card, take a look at that. So our choice is a unit activation with Winchester. Winchester holds these troops. And he's stationed here in Ohio. He's going to start to try to move up towards Michigan. Up towards Detroit, if you will. So we're going to roll always for movement. We're going to roll two six-sided. That's movement for everybody. It doesn't matter whether there's vessels or land units. Two six-sided. So I'll go ahead and throw two six-sided and we'll see what we got. It looks like a six. All right, let's move them on six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. From four to five, it's basically to the Maumee Rapids. He'll move up to there. So moving right along the road is going to cost you one. Next in the sequence of play is the block event phase. Well, the block event phase does is to allow the opposing player, if the card is an event, which this is, it allows the opposing player to block it, to not allow it to happen. In this scenario, the block event segment is skipped. Okay, so you're unable to block events in this scenario. But generally, you can block one event per hand. One enemy event. Not a combat card, not a reaction card. You can block one enemy event at this point. You read it, the enemy reads it, decides whether they want it to go off or whether they want to block it. They have one block per hand. In this case, event block is not used in the scenario, so we'll skip it. Okay, so the event phase is next, and the event automatically happens, the event segment. So we're going to if you take a read on that. It says, if it's the first U.S. action phase of spring, which it is, then we'll perform one unit activation with Winchester again. And then we can perform a second. We'll roll the dice and see what we get. For we do unit activation, we'll move them. All right, it looks like another six. So we're going to move one two and to enter an enemy hex costs four so that'd be six the enemy at that point can decide whether they want to evade or not okay you can just do it there's no roll so he will evade he's going to go one two or three hexes he'll go one two and three like that 
and he'll stay right there. So it says you can perform one unit of activation with Winchester, complete his activation movement and combat, and perform a second if I want to. So I'm going to go ahead and... Mm, nah, you know what? We'll leave him right there. I think we'll leave him right there. We're going to put that in the discard pile, and we're going to check for the end of game. The end of game is going to occur. You're going to roll an eight-sided, and you're going to take the sum of the cards in both hands. The British have eight cards. The U.S. has seven cards at this point. So the sum of the cards is 15. So I'm going to roll an eight-sided. If that number is greater than 15, then the uh, game ends. If it's less, the game continues. Well, obviously, you can't roll uh, more than 15 with an 8-sided. So skip the end determination phase. And we'll continue with the British action phase. I'll uh, roll for the end of the game when the number of cards reaches 7, when I can actually affect the game. Next will be the British phase. And what we'll do with the British is we'll try this card here. Take a look at that. Double shot. All right. It's not an event, though. Okay, so we're going to play the points first. We have three points, so that, that's the point of it. We have three points. So we're going to take one, the first stop, and we're going to um, roll for unit activation for Proctor. He happens to be right here in Fort Malden. And we're going to try to move him around and see what he can do. So we'll throw his dice for his movement. It's always two six-sided, and we're going to roll a nine. Now, the most common error I see with movement is moving off roads. If you're on a ferry, which is any one or two river hexes, roads are considered to extend from every hex side to every hex side. In a settlement, road is considered to extend from every hex side to every hex side. But, but what I see a common error is that people will go, okay, so one, so there's a road. But crossing here, they go two. But there's no road connecting, though. So the first one would be, if I wanted to go that way, it would be one and then four more. So that would be five total. So be careful about going off the roads. The roads have to connect in order to use the roads. That's the most common error I see people make is moving like something like that against the roads. So nonetheless, we have a nine. We're going to move them up like this way. One, two, three. Three. Again, we can use a ferry. A ferry is any one or two river hexes. So we'll go three, four, five. We're going to pick up some of these units and keep on going, okay? Six. We'll pick up some of these guys and leave some here. We'll take the Kumsi and we'll leave him. Now, you have to have um, units in enemy settlements, otherwise you'll lose control of them. We don't really have control markers in this game. Your, your units are your control markers. So we'll continue here. So we'll go 8. We'll go there. This seems good. We'll put them right there. Second op, what we'll do is we'll roll uh, unit activation for the units in Black Rock, way over here in Fort George. And we're going to roll to move them. So here we go. Okay, it looks like, whoa, we roll a 12. Okay, boxcars, let's go. So we're going to take these guys and we're going to move them down. And we'll show you an example of cutting out. So we'll take them and we'll move them this way. One, oops, we'll go one and two and three, four. And then we'll go in eight. Now, at this point, if there's an enemy unit enters X, the ships have to go out into the harbor. And the units in the in this case, the, the U.S. units have the choice of evading or going to battle. In this case, they'll just evade. They'll go one, two, or three hexes. There's no role. You can just evade. So they'll go back towards into Lewis and head towards Buffalo. So I've gone one, two, three, four, five, and then we'll add four more. And we'll jump on top of the ship. What we're going to try to do is to take on the Caledonia. And we'll try a cutting out. So a cutting out, what you want to do is take a look at one of the player's aids. Okay, on the player aid in the lower right, you'll see the cutting out, cutting out boarding right here. You want to look at that. If you size up the units and the modifiers, we'll go back and take a look at those. Okay, if we take a look at and size up the units, 
what we're going to end up with is the British are going to roll at a plus one and the US will roll at zero. Each of them are going to roll six-sided, and then we're going to add plus one to the British because he has a ship. So the British roll will be a three add one, that'll be a four, and the U.S. roll will be a six. So we have cut out the ship, and what we're going to do is then roll for capture. That's right under the cutting out boarding. So we'll roll a six-sided and see what happens here. Looks like a five, so the vessel is captured and it must evade. So what we're going to do is take the unit and put him back where he was and we're going to take the ship and replace him with the British ship like that and then we're going to evade him one two or three so we'll go one and two right there. That's cutting out boarding. If you're on a river you can cut out a ship like that. So the next operation, third operation, what we'll try is move the unit here in London. So we'll try unit activation, roll two sixes. It's going to be a four. We'll move them one, two, three, and four. And then we'll go to the event segment. But in this case, it's a not an event. It's a combat card, so there is no event. We'll go to the next. We'll skip again the block events and, and that. And the end of game determination, because the game can't end yet. We'll go to the U.S. play. The U.S. play will try this. Okay, this is an event. But always play the ops first. So the first op will construct one of our vessels here. We'll do a vessel construction. Okay, so we'll take a look at these. These are all unconstructed. And what the U.S. will do is they'll construct the Niagara, okay? So we'll just release the... Vessel constructed marker, unconstructed marker, and put it right over to the side. That costs one op. For the second one, what we'll do is a unit activation for Harrison over here, and we'll try and join up with Winchester. Okay, let's see how that goes. He's going to roll up. He's going to roll a five, so let's move five. One, two, three, four, oops, four, and five. Perfect. Okay. In the event segment, we, we do have an event, and there's no block events in this scenario. So we're going to place the constructed Lady of the Lake, and we're going to move him. That's over here. We will put him here in, uh, let's say, Cleveland. So he's got to go into a port with enough dock space. The, the amount of units that can be in the port is the number of docks in the harbor. Any number of vessels can be in the harbor, but only the number of vessels that can be in the port is the dock space. So three vessels could be in Cleveland at one time. Well, we only have one now. So we also on this card, we get a unit activation, perform one unit activation with Lady of the Lake. So we'll do that. So we'll roll two sixes, and he's going to roll a seven, and we're going to move him always out through the harbor. We'll go one. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. If somehow we can exit up through Lake St. Clair into Lake Huron, perhaps we can control Lake Huron with that vessel. That's my thought on that. Next, we'll try the British card. The British will try this card here. The British will play White Squalls, which is an event. So the first thing is always play the op. So they'll play uh, the first op to move Proctor. And what we're going to try to do is take on uh, Winchester's troops. So let's do that. Here we go. Roll his dice. He's going to roll a seven. We'll go. We'll leave one unit back. One, we can pick up units. One, two, three, plus four. And we'll jump in, and what we'll do is we'll try a battle, and we'll show you an example of battle, okay? Here we go. We're going to drop down the combat board. These are the units that were in the battle. Now, Winchester has the option to revade the battle before it even happens, but he's going to stand for the battle. So here we are. Now, you can line up your troops in many different ways. There's, you know, you can leave your flanks open. You can 
put guys into reserve. You can use the support box. There's many different ways to deploy your troops. So in this case, we'll try this method. The British will be in one long line with some reserves, and the Americans will be heavy on the right flank. We'll try that. So the first thing you want to do is deploy your units on the paddleboard and pick a combat posture. And I've picked those, I've chosen those for the British. We'll try a feigned retreat for the British and a refused flank for the US. And these will be the plays for their combat posture. If you take a look at the combat posture chart, if you have the player's aid. Okay, this is a combat posture chart. So the defender is gonna pick one of the five. The attacker is gonna pick one of the five. You're gonna cross reference these in some fashion, whichever one they are. And this will tell you what the attacker's dice and the defender's dice are. In this case, we have this one, where the uh, attacker did feign and the uh, defender did the refuse flank. So it'll be two six-sided and a six and an eight for the defender, two sixes for the attacker. Okay, so after you pick your combat posture and deploy your troops, then you show each other your battle boards. At this point, you're going to start to roll to do your volley fires. It's always going to be the center first, so we're going to add up all our modifiers for our defenders and our attacker using the charts on the combat posture matrix right under combat posture make sure there's some battle strength modifiers if you follow those battle strength modifiers in the center the british have three for their unit they have one because they have two or more units in reserve than the enemy the enemy has zero and they have two so that's plus one more if back to the board they also have naval support offshore support if you will the British will also have flanking because they have a unit in the right flank and the defender doesn't and they have the feigned retreat which is two dice so that's what they'll have a total of two dice six add eight if you add up the US they'll have three four nothing for the defense oh and nothing for the attack too nothing for the defense nothing for the attack they have one in support, so they have four. They have a refused flank, which gives them a plus two, because they are being flanked at this point. But they're in partial supply. If you go back to the map, right in this hex right here is being interdicted by the British ships. So they're going to have partial supply. So that would be a minus one. So they're going to have one to eight to add five. So the one die six, one die eight, add five. So here's the bottom line. The British have two dice six at eight. The U.S. Uh, dice six and dice eight add five. So we're going to throw those. The British. Okay. That'll be 10 plus eight. That'll be 18. And we'll throw the U.S. That'll be five plus five. That'll be 10. The difference is eight. So the U.S. are going to flip. They have the less like that on this flank again we'll add up our modifiers if you look at all the modifiers what the british end up with is two dice six add seven and the u.s ends up with a six and an eight add three so we'll go ahead and throw the dice for the british two sixes add seven that'll be seven add seven that's 14 and a six and an eight add three how about 8? Eight? 8 add 3, that's 11, so 14 to 11. That will be flip over the U.S. units, like that. At the end of volleys from all three, the right flank, the center, and the left, there is no right flank, left flank for this area. After that, each side's going to decide whether they want to continue with the second round of combat or whether they want to evade. In this case, I think it's best that the U.S. evade. So, and you do this in secret. The British hold out their card, and then the U.S. hold out their card, and then they show them simultaneously. And the U.S. could evade, and they will. So they will back out of this battle. And we'll reduce these units the way they were. Like that. And like that. And what we'll do is retreat them. One. We'll treat them back to, uh, back to Harrison. 
After the battle, the very last thing you want to do is see if they have any cards, any post-combat cards, which the British do. So they'll throw one down. And here they are. It says Winchester Capture. We'll play this card after any combat in which Winchester press him, which he is, and we'll throw a dice. And we get to draw a card. Don't forget that. So we'll throw a dice and see what happens to him. A five. Uh, Winchester is eliminated. So we will take him off the board. Put him down here. And these guys will go one, two, or three. So they'll continue to go one, two, and back into Harrison three. Okay. They also have this one, which allows them to play. Generally, you can only play one post-combat card. But in this case, this card allows an additional card, an additional post-combat card. So we were going to play this one, too. And what we'll do is throw another eight-sided and see if we can cause more havoc. Looks like a seven. So we'll cause them two more step losses on the way out of town on the Ray, River Raisin Massacre. So we'll take out these guys also, these Kentucky. We'll reduce them. One and two. So it looks like Harrison, what he's controlling is an army of ones. And what we have up here with Proctor is a pretty good army. So let's continue on. I like what's going on here with the British. Let's see what we can do. We shall continue on. That was the Battle of Frenchtown. That was his op. That was the op that he has. White Squalls was not an event, so we don't get the event. So we're going to move on. Okay, so we had the uh, White Squalls card. Let's take a look at that right quick. That was two ops, so we have one op left. And what we want to do is to continue to move this unit from London, okay? And we'll try to join Shafe. So we'll throw two six-siders. And he's going to roll a seven, and he'll continue. One, two, three, and he'll join Shafe right here. Three. There is an event, a White Squalls event, but in this case, the uh, British will opt to decline the event. Okay, so no event. You can decline them. The only player can decline the event, which they will. Going to the U.S., what they'll try is this one here. Okay, so we have two ops. And the first operation, we're going to try to take some troops from way down here in Cincinnati and start to move them north. So if you move with the leader, you can move five troops for every star. But if you're moving a unit without a leader, it's just one unit. So we'll just try this unit right here, the 26th. And we're going to try unit activation with the first top. And we're going to roll it, which is a 10, which is pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, what the British will try is to play their failed orders card here. If I can grab it. There it is. Okay, so he's not going to move. Now, one thing I did forget to do, I can tell you already, is to draw my cards. So I draw one card for this one, but it was draw uh, also for the Winchester captured card. That's draw a card, and so is River Massacre. So I need to draw three. Okay, so it's failed orders, so let's draw three. Three, we'll do like that. So the first hop was a failed order, so we'll go to the second ops, and what we'll do is we'll throw a couple dice, and we'll try for Lewis, okay? Right over here. And what Lewis is going to do is he's going to roll a nine, and he's going to start moving up and push back this unit. Now, if he goes here, he's got to be careful about supply. Always consider your supply and how ships block supply. They can block supplies like over here in these hexes. Over here by Frenchtown. They can block supply in the hex that Lewis is in because it's a ship. If a gunboat cannot do that, but a ship can. So he'll block his supply if we don't leave a unit there. So what we'll do is we'll leave a unit. Okay, and we're going to continue on. We're going to jump on top of him. So that's one and then four. But the, the, this guy doesn't like this. So he's going to evade the British unit. He's going to split. He's going to go one, two, or three. So we'll go one, two, and three. 
just like that. Lewis will continue. Now, if he evades, it doesn't cost four to move in. So that's only two. So one, two, three, four. And then he'll go eight and jump in on him. But he'll retreat again. So that's five. One, two, three, four, five. He'll go again into him. These guys will retreat again. One, two, and three. And he'll stop right there. We'll scare off those British units off the Niagara Peninsula. And then we'll see uh, what we can do with that. So the event phase is to remove all the unconstructed markers. And we'll do that right over here in Erie. We'll take these off. That's what we'll do. And we'll create a fleet. So this one, that one, and that one. So that uh, Perry Admiral will have a fleet. Niagara, Porcupine, Scorpion, and Tigress. They'll be ready to go. Okay, we'll move on to the British. The British will go and they'll try this one here. Okay. We'll try the night attack on Stony. They get one up first. So we'll, we'll do that first. And the first hop will be, we'll try a bateau move with Proctor. So he's going to move some of his troops back to Fort Malden. So we'll take Fort Malden and we'll take this troop and we'll take Proctor himself. And what we're going to do is use some bateau movement. We'll show you bateau movement. So bateau movement is different than ferry movement. Ferry movement is one or two hexes on a river. Bateau can be up to 15 hexes. Okay, so they can move 15 hexes. So if you're moving one unit, it's no roll. But in this case, we're going to be moving two units. So on one of the player's aid, you'll see there's a bateau movement card. If you move in one, it's always success. Two to five, you have to roll an eight-sided. Okay, a one is not successful. Okay, if you're entering enemy occupied hex, there's some modifiers. So he's going to roll a 2 to 5 regiment. He'll roll an 8, 2 to 5 regiments. He's got 2. He'll roll an 8. If he rolls a 1, he's unsuccessful. So he'll roll a 2. So he will. He'll go 1, 2. He can move only along shore hexes. 3, and then 4. He'll go like that. Only along the shore. Everything along here is considered a shore. For instance... This hex is considered a shore because it's on the vertex of this island. So you could go one, two, three, and then four like that. You don't have to exit in through the harbor or anything. You do have to end or start at a settlement, though. If it's a lake hex, you have to land at a settlement. If it's on a river, you can land anywhere. Okay, so rivers, you can land anywhere. You can land here. But on a lake, you cannot just land here. That's a no. No D-Days or anything like that. So he's going to go right to Fort Malden. Okay, we'll give that a go. We'll try our event now, which is this attack. And what we're going to do is pit these troops here against Lewis's troops here. And it says that we can go ahead and roll a dice. And each player is going to have a, an eight-sided. We'll take this regular with a three versus... The regular with the four, the twelfth. So they have a bigger strength, okay? So it's an eight sided, but the U.S. is going to add one. So the British will roll a six. The U.S. will roll an eight, add one. That will be a two, add one. Well, the U.S. will suffer step loss, so we'll reduce that. Like that. And we trade them down a little bit more. Their army now consists of that. Okay. Moving on to the U.S. turn. The U.S. turn is the attack. We'll try this one. The attack on Fort George. Oh, we got to draw a card. Don't want to forget that. Okay. Draw a card for the British. Put it in their hand. Don't forget that. You have to even out the cards. You know, everybody's got to have the same amount of cards. So here we are. We're trying to... Okay, we're back to the operation points. We're going to build a depot in Buffalo. Buffalo will build the depot. That'll help extend the supply lines. 
We'll build a depot right there. The supply lines go 20 from Erie, so we're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So there's no interdiction. That's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So they're at the end of their tether. What they need to do is extend it with a supply depot, which will give them 20 more hexes so they can reach up to Burlington. So they can get 20 more hexes from there all the way up to there and, you know, extend their range out to take those places. Otherwise, they'll suffer consequences, negative consequences. So we'll build depot with the first one. That's the first op. With the second op, what we'll do is we'll roll Lewis and see what he can do. And we'll roll his unit activation, which is going to be a 9. We'll try this. So we have to leave a unit back to control the hex. And we'll go 1, 2, We'll jump on him, but he'll retreat one, two, and back in here. So one, two, three, four. We'll leave him in there, and we'll put him right in there. Okay. After that, we'll try the event segment. What the event segment says is to place Scott and his units into Fort George and try a siege warfare so we'll take a look at siege warfare here he comes here comes winfield scott he lands there's no units to face so he'll go straight to the siege scott will be rolling on the 10 column and the british will be rolling on the zero column because they have none there are some modifiers if you take a look at those the british will have one because they are the defender there, the besieged, you always get one for that. And the U.S. will have two for Scott. So we'll roll. The British will roll a seven. So that'll be one. And the British, a three add two. So we will take the fort, but the U.S. will suffer one. So we'll flip them over. Like that. Okay. Okay. Moving forward, we'll go to the British play. British will try Laura Secord. That gives him three outs. First, we'll try Shafe, and we'll move him. So Shafe's going to roll, ooh, a seven. And what he's going to do is he's going to push Lewis back. So Lewis will back down here. He's not as strong. We'll go back towards, you know, Winfield Scott. We'll jump in with him. These guys will drive him all the way back to the gates. Like that. We'll try that. Okay, so we'll look at the Caledonia. Since he's taking care of the supply issue, what we'll do is we'll try to move Caledonia, and we'll just move him down here and block the supply this way. Still putting him in partial supply. The next would be a third operation. What we'll do is we'll take Barclay, and we'll challenge the U.S. fleet. So we'll go ahead and we'll move Barclay. We're going to back him off and allow the U.S. to come out and challenge them, because, you know, the British like to do that. So we're going to send them a letter and challenge the U.S. fleet. There is no event, so we'll move to the U.S. turn. The U.S. turn, they will play this one. They have one op. They'll go ahead and roll Perry and move them out, and let's try a battle. So he's going to roll a 10. So we're going to come out. We're going to come here. That's one. Over here is going to be four more. So that's five plus another four. Okay. Here we are. Big battle. Big ship battle. Our ships will look like that. And let's see what we got. I have them displayed here. You're going to line up your ships in descending order, starting with A through J. Descending order. Descending order, and then any reserves, any leftovers, like this, will be put in reserve. Always start at 1 if you're on your full strength side. If you would be on your reduced strength side, he would start at 2. Gunboats would start at 2. And if it was a ship and he was reduced... 
you'd be starting here. So, but we're full strength, so we're going to start right at number one. Okay, so we're going to take a look and we're going to exchange broadsides for each side, for each matching letter. So letter A is going to broadside with letter A. So it's Perry on the Niagara versus Barclay on the Queen Charlotte. Let's take a look. So it's going to be simultaneous. The British are going to be rolling one eight sided. They have a black dice and then three white, four white, a black and four white. Okay, so let's see what happens. Okay, here comes the black. Oh, that's a six. So you compare it to the hull value. If it's greater than the hull value, you move them down one. Now all shots are simultaneous, so. But we'll push them down one for the black. And then we're gonna roll four white. Oh wow, that's three, two fives and a six and a one, but the one is a miss. So two fives and a six, so that's, uh, put Perry on him. That'd be one. Once he reaches three, he flips. That'd be one hit for the five. Another hit for the five. And if you take a hit and you're in the same column as your hull, which he is, then you're sunk. So he would be sunk. But shots are simultaneous. So let's see what happens with the Niagara. He had four eight-siders and a six-sider. Let's see what we can do. Four eight-siders. That uh, two, a three, a four, and a five. Well, that's one hit. And then we'll roll the six. That's a three. That's a miss. That looks like a good exchange. So they sunk the Niagara. We're going to roll to see what happens to the Niagara. Here he goes. There's a capture vessel right at the bottom of one of the player's aids, and you consult that. We're going to roll a two, so that's going to be eliminated. We're going to continue on. Perry will go to another ship later. We're going to continue on. The next thing is an eight... So we'll do the British first. An eight and two sixes. And we want a four or better. The eight will roll a five, so that's a hit. And then two sixes. We want three or better. That's two fours. One. He flips. He takes another hit in the three column. That's sunk. We'll roll to see if he's captured or what happens to him. We're going to roll a, looks like a five. That's a capture. So we're going to take the scorpion back to our board and return him as a red vessel. Okay, so we're going to put the scorpion back on where the, where the battle was on his reduced strength side, and we're going to retreat him one, two, or three. So we'll go one, two, oops, two, and three. Oop, right there. So when you capture him, he's immediately must evade. So he's gone. So we'll go back to our battle, and we're going to continue our broadsides. Here we have a six versus a six. So we'll try the Chippewa first. He's going to roll a one. No. And then the tigress back at him. We'll roll a two. No. So we'll move on to the porcupine. The porcupine and versus the little belt. Little belt will roll a six sider. That'll be a four. So we'll push him down one. He'll fire back with a sixer. That'll be a five. He'll do the same to him. And then we have this reserve ship over here which will fire and try and finish off the porcupine with an eight-sided. So he'll roll an eight-sided, that'll be a three, and that'll be eliminated, and we'll roll for capture. No, that's a three, and that's uh, removed from the map. Okay, so in the second round, we can evade or we can continue the battle. Well, the British obviously want to continue, and the U.S. would evade. So we would take Perry, and what we'll do is we'll evade... With what we have left here, with our ships, uh, the Tigris, and we'll get out of there. And Perry will go. 
from here. They will go one, two, three. And we'll make sure we record our damages. The little belt was also damaged. Put him on there. Okay, it looks like successful for the British. Okay, we'll go to the event segment, which is the Seneca. We'll put them in Buffalo. This here, Red Jacket and Farmer's Brother. We'll put them in Buffalo. And we'll roll an activation for them. And it will be a 10. We'll just move them, you know, up here, though. We'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We'll go like that. Now, at this point, the U.S. has three cards, and the British have um, four cards at this point that we can roll for the end of the game. If we roll, we roll an eight side. If we roll an eight, which is more than the sum of both the cards, since we have seven, then the game will be over. So we'll roll. That will be a seven, so the game will continue. So the British will play one more card. And we'll play this one, Proctor's Ohio. We have one point. So what we'll do is we'll gather up our, our fleet. We'll move Barclay. He's going to always roll two six-sided. He rolls a seven, so he'll go one, two, three. Pick him up. Four, five, six, and seven. We'll run this guy. And then that was the op. We'll go to the to the event. The event is a free bad toe for Proctor, and we'll try it this way. We'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we'll go right in the here, and we'll put a siege marker on him and try and siege that. So we'll go to the end of the event phase where we have now six cards. So if we roll. A 7 or 8, the game ends. So we'll roll a dice. And it is an 8, so the game is ended. So what we'll do is we'll tally the victory points using the column right here. Also an additional 3 points for Lake Erie, and uh, no one gets Lake Huron, but that would be another. So we're going to go to the victory point chart and we're going to add those up okay victory phase that would be 23 the rule books page 43 and if we tally up the victory let's see how it goes we have the u.s with four victory points these two right here two and four and they're all along the niagara peninsula along with the 10 for the special scenario rules for a total of 14 and the british on the other hand have two four six this one here is another that's four so that'd be ten plus the three for lake erie that'd be thirteen plus one for when they played the uh, fort george car that'd be fourteen so they each have fourteen points so it looks like a draw but the tiebreaker is the control of lake erie these have what you do is you add up your hull value and if you're on a lake, then you double it. And if you're in your port or harbor, then it's times one. In this case, the British way outclass any U.S. ships on the lake, so they have lake control. So they break the tie, and the British win the tie. And that's how the scenario ends with the British winning on a draw. And we'd like to thank uh, Yvonne Caceres, the artist, the game developer, Rich Jennings, and, of course, Compass Games. Thanks for watching.